This just might be one of the coolest things I've ever made. And to think I was going to throw these pieces away and do nothing with them. So glad I didn't. You want to see how I did this? I know you do. Stay tuned. Let's go. So after cutting down quite a few of these French cleat brackets on the laser, I realized that middle piece could probably be used for something like you saw in the beginning. I figured let's just put a hole in one side during the process of cutting these out and I've got quite a few of them as you can see here. This is probably only half of what I've really had <laughs> over the past. So we're going to use these and we're going to make a visually interesting piece of art. You saw it in the beginning, I think it's going to be pretty cool, but here's the process. I took a quarter inch, basically a quarter 20 threaded rod, and I'm going to go ahead and just over the next few minutes put each of these pieces on. Now, one by one is taking a little bit longer than I want, so three at a time is about the max you can do without frustrating yourself to line these holes up. As you can see, it is a pretty tight fit. So once everything's together, I put two nuts on each side to kind of jam lock them in. And then I take a clamp and make sure that I've got a really good clamping pressure on this because I'm going to trim off the edges. The edges of these pieces are actually pretty fragile. As I didn't round them over whatsoever, I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to use a sanding block to help me with this. You can see where they kind of chip away a little bit. And plus, this is maybe going to be touched by some kids around here. And I don't want anybody pricking their fingers on this sharp wood. I've then taken it over to the table saw. And this is one of those things where you got to be careful. Kind of, I'm not recommending you do it this way, but I did it and it seemed to work out well. So after a light sanding off of the table saw, the pieces of wood on the edge are burned because of the laser cut and I've basically taken that edge away. So with a small butane lighter, I'm going to so shoogie bond the edges back to kind of their original burntness, if that's a word. And then we're going to go ahead and tighten this thing down so I can get a start on making the, well, the visually interesting piece of this whole thing. I don't have a plan here. I'm just going to separate these as best I can by eye. As you see... I've got enough tension to where everything stays in place as I go back and forth and just kind of do this, like I said, by eye. Over and over, this process takes, well, it took me a little bit to do this, but I'm starting to actually see this thing come together. This was kind of a vision I had testing this with a few pieces, and I was wondering how this was going to look using almost 100 of these things, and it is turning out fantastic. What do you think? And the visual interest of this has turned out better than I thought. I love how this turned out, but we're not nearly finished yet. My first idea of this was to keep it outside, kind of hang it, you know, on, on an eve of a house or something and let the wind kind of spin it around. And I thought, you know, what better way to protect this thing if it's going to be outside than just flood the whole thing with some two to one resin from Total Boat. So why not? But it was going to be very difficult to do. And before I mixed it up, I had this idea. I took one of these mobile tables, these fold-up tables. You can find these at your local big box store. And the top happens to be filled with dog holes, three-quarters of an inch dog holes. You see them there. It just worked out that I could put the threaded rod up through it and then use this as a hands-free application to go ahead and apply the resin. If there ever was a jack-of-all-trades resin, this is totally it. The two-to-one high-performance resin from Total Bow. Everything's linked down below if you want to get yourself some. This is going to be awesome. You can see it's a little bit yellow. It's because I had some of it sitting around for a little while, and that's just the nature of the beast. But a little black tint inside the resin is going to take care of all that. Plus, I didn't just want to put plain clear resin on this anyway. And this, well, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you guys. This process was really fun, but it was a little... Uh, precarious i wasn't sure exactly how this was going to work but this took roughly about 10 to 15 minutes to finally get all in these nooks and crannies and i did this in two batches but i did it basically upside down first what you're looking at here is the bottom of the piece and then i'm going to flip it over and to really help myself get this resin in all these little nooks and crannies like i said i'm going to go ahead and enlist a squeeze bottle and of course after you Transfer your resin from one vessel to another, which is going to definitely help you in the curing process. This squeeze bottle here, as you can see, I filled it up just a little bit. I think it's going to help me get it in there. Now, it does, but really, it just took more effort with the foam brush. Quite frankly, the squeeze bottle worked well. I just love seeing it cascade down this sculptural piece. It's kind of neat. And honestly, I don't really know how this is even going to turn out at this point. 
Again, this is all an experiment. This is all something in the name of art, which I'm not really an artist per se, but this is something I did want to try, and I thought it turned out really nice. And there you go. And there are some drips on the bottom, but I'm going to leave those drips for kind of visual interest as kind of an idea for, you know, you know, for art, right? <laughs> but check that out. Turned out really well. I like just the little black tint that's on there. And the next morning I come out, it's all dry. And honestly, it's just so cool. <laughs> check this sucker out. <laughs> this is so cool. So the idea to keep it outside is gone. I'm not doing that. I just want to put this either on a French cleat wall here in the shop or in my office or to be an own standalone piece. So this is the base I made for it. Now, the bottom of this base looks like one of those fish you would see like at a doctor's office, kind of one of those tropical fish, but it's not. It's two French cleat brackets put together and cut out to kind of pay homage to how I made this. So we're going to take a little glue, put them in those grooves or those little, those little mortises there, hammer them in. Once that glue dries, we're going to be good to go. Now, I kind of bumbled my way through this process. You're just going to be along for the ride. I found these little... Well, I found them. Actually, <clears throat> my wife has a collection of hardware, and um, she actually found these for me. And the idea was is to take these kind of crowned pieces of metal, put them in the base, and then recess kind of like, I don't know, like a concaved area where the sharp threaded rod you can see there for a place to stay. But I'm realizing it's, it's going to take a little more coercing than that. So I've taken my jeweler's hammer and I've clamped it up into the vise and I'm trying to flatten it out and it's just not working at all. And I finally get kind of an idea, but then I punch the thing right through. I'm like, oh my God. Luckily, she had a second one <laughs> and I was able to kind of try this process again. Like I said, I'm bumbling my way through this. So I found an old like rounded Allen key and I'm going to kind of use that and then a ball peen hammer just to kind of make this recess. I kind of think you know where I'm going for. A couple other ideas I had though was to strip out a screw intentionally and have the tip of this threaded rod in that screw. That might work too. I don't know. Any suggestions on this type of thing would definitely be, you know, warranted in the comments. Let me know. But like I said, I struggled through this thing but ended up working okay. So <clears throat> after I've done that, I've cut the threaded rod to length. And I should have sharpened the end of this rod before I built the thing, and I didn't. So I've had to join these two things together with a nut. I did put CA glue in there. Everything's secure. Now it's time to go to the top of this sculptural piece and go ahead and drill the hole out. That's going to accept the top of the threaded rod as well. And here goes. Full disclosure, I haven't tried this yet. So uh, this is going to be the first for, for all of us here. Uh, so what I'm going to do, though, is... Put a little bit of paste wax on the receiving end, if I can get the thing open. Um, oh, actually, hold on. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to put a little bit of paste wax here, just kind of on this receiving end here, just to kind of, well, you know, to eliminate some friction, at least that's the hope. I don't know if this is going to work. Promise you, I haven't tested this at all. Uh, let's see. So I guess you... I wonder if I'm going to be able to get that through. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh my goodness. If this works... I'm going to trim this off eventually, but I just wanted to see. All right. Here goes. Okay. <laughs> it's not as uh, frictionless as I would hope. I wonder why that is. Hmm. It's a good question. <laughs> and of course, I got wax on it. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so, but so far, I'm happy. What do you think? As it turns out, the top hole was just not quite wide enough in diameter. We've extended it, and here we go. <clears throat> I 
Here's hoping. Yep, that was the ticket. Look at that grin. <laughs> oh, and to think I would have thrown this away. How cool is this? Okay, so for a little insurance here, so it doesn't come flying off the rails if someone were to spin this thing too fast. I'm joining two laser cut rings together and we're gonna put these at the base of the sculpture. You kind of get the idea, right? Once it's in place, it'll be less prone to popping off because those rings are there. I just love how this turns. But a little CA glue, we're gonna glue these things in place and then yeah, we're good to go. It's just peace of mind, you know? So for a little more stability, I'm attaching some rubber feet to the bottom and now it's time to, well, let's have fun with it for a little bit. Check this out. All right, a little shenanigans here. Ready? I think I'm gonna have to hold it because it's, yeah, it spins, and, but it's not 100% balanced. So we'll just give this a go, see how this goes. Good enough. I mean, it's a little weeble wobble at some point. <laughs> this is just so crazy to me. I love it. I love it. It's, it's dumb. I get it, but I love it. <laughs> And here's a closer look at it in action. This thing is really cool. Now, I may paint the base, the actual stand that holds it. I might paint it like a matte black, I don't know. But this was a cool process. And again, like I said, I'm not really an artist per se, but this was really fun to do. It was a cool concept and I just love how it turned out. Definitely wanna know your thoughts. And I have a final thought about this in the outro that I really wanna get some feedback on. So I appreciate that as well. There you go. That is the craziest thing I think I've ever built. I mean, it's not much, but it was this concept I had. And honestly, I think it's awesome. I wanna know your thoughts. Um, I'm also thinking of bringing this kind of thing to a very smaller, a much smaller scale as kind of like a kit to put together for, for you to put this together at home um, to make this type of thing. And uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do it, but I just wanna know if there's any interest um, kind of like a KiwiCo kind of box kind of thing. Might be kind of fun to do as a, as a family if you got kids or even if you don't, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know guys. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you on the next video and this was cool, right? Yeah. See you there. Bye.